Okay, next up we have Veeam, ASX code VEE, -E, and they have a market cap of around 85 million. Veeam is a designer and manufacturer of disruptive high technology marine propulsion and stabilization systems for the global luxury motor yacht, fast ferry, commercial workboat, and events industries. A warm welcome back to Veeam Managing Director, Mark Majovic. Welcome back, Mark. Thanks, Paul, and welcome, everybody. Uh, we'd like to talk about um, Veeam's uh, recent work that we're doing. And if we could just um, go to a first slide, that would be great. Perhaps beyond that one would be better. That's great. Look, Veeam was commenced in 1968. Uh, I was there. I helped dig the foundations of the nine-year-old. Uh, and we listed on the ASX at 2016. So we're headquartered in Perth. We've got 14,700 square metres of uh, specially constructed fabrication and manufacturing facilities. And we also have Australia's largest uh, defence accredited non-ferrous foundry. So we have about 200 people working here, a little over, uh, including graduates and apprentices. And we have a worldwide uh, network of agents and subcontractors for our products. So we have highly skilled research and development team in-house, uh, especially in the key product areas. And uh, as we mentioned before, we're, uh, we're specialising in disruptive high-tech marine products. So our revenue generally comes in from uh, propellers, uh, gyro stabilizers, uh, defence manufacturing, and engineering products and services for the mining and industrial sector. So if we just move to the next slide. Uh, so the recent agreement uh, relates to a propeller. Uh, you'll see that in the, the right-hand side. That is called a Sharo design propeller. And you can see it's a very unique, almost a, a biplane design, uh, which has got the two tips joined. And it's been quite a revolution and we've recently signed an agreement to partner together to um, develop these shower propellers for inboard powered vessels. So Veeam will then exclusively manufacture and sell these shower propellers uh, worldwide for inboard from approximately 500 millimetres to five metre diameter. So the agreement lasts for 17 years or, or longer if there's an additional patent work and provided Veeam meets minimum requirements for sales of propellers over the first three years, and they're not very onerous. And uh, the, if we make, if we don't meet these, then obviously uh, Sharo can then make it a non-exclusive agreement. But certainly, we're not precluded from continuing to manufacture. And we'll pay Sharo a license fee. That'll be based on the sales of these products, and they will um, obviously be involved in the marketing and the design side of the product. And you'll see uh, Greg Sharo, my brother Brad. Greg is on the left. My brother Brad is on the right, and. Uh, what we're doing to progress this project now that we've signed the agreement and manufactured the display propellers is that uh, Shara will develop designs quickly for our test vessel. We have a, a boat behind me is a 64 foot Viking with nearly 5,000 horsepower. So we can uh, really test these thoroughly. And what we're doing is looking at verifying uh, the claims that uh, have been made by Shara. They've done uh, testing, back-to-back -back testing with our own product and they've compared it to our product. So on a 65 foot vessel. So it looks very promising and we've seen significant fuel consumption reductions, but we want to make sure that we can verify that in uh, on our vessel in a controlled environment with um, the correct authorities witnessing that so we can use that for our marketing. So we go to the next slide. So, uh, the Shara propeller, as you can see, is radically different. It's the, the biggest advancement certainly we've seen in propellers, and Shara propellers are saying since 19, 18, sorry, 1830. Certainly, we've never heard of any large advancement in the last 100 years. So, um, And this design, uh, this need came about because Greg was involved in uh, the music industry and he was recording outdoor classical music concerts and the drones were very noisy. So very clever man, thought outside the nine dots, developed this new concept so that he could basically make the drones operate very quietly as they could record these concerts. So he then started looking at other, other areas that could use that technology. And of course, the marine industry is a, you know, a ripe for development. So he, he moved into the marine side. So he he has solved this most basic problem of, of any sort of rotary propulsion. It's the tip cavitation and the tip vortices 
that have been eliminated or significantly reduced. And that gives an incredible performance gain over traditional propellers. And if you look at the wing, at the window of your plane at the wing, you'll see all the new planes they've got at the end of the wing, there's a tip or a tiplet. And uh, that is attempting to do a similar sort of thing in the air. So the award-winning uh, shadow propeller design has, has made a significant impact on the outboard motor market with improvements to fuel efficiency, and they've recorded improvements up to 25%, um, but certainly uh, significant across the range. Noise reductions, which I was very surprised to see, some examples of 110 dB falling to 90 dB, which are massive noise reductions, and vibration smoothness has improved, obviously, because you're not getting uh, the disturbance of the tip vortices. And so we're now taking this technology and looking at the larger inboard propellers, so inboard boats from sort of 10 metres uh, upwards. So uh, the shower patents protect these designs, and they've, they've got over 100 individual patents, preventing them from being copied by others. And we've combined it um, with our own technology, and you'll see in the photo there, there's blue, uh, what looks like plastic strips, and that's the Veeam patented interceptor strips, which enable us to tune the propeller pitch um, create, we can change the height of that strip above the surface and change the effective pitch, which means we can tune them underwater. And the combination of those technologies is what we're going to be putting forward. So giving us an exclusive worldwide license gives us the confidence to develop and invest in this process and methods with the expectation there'll be a very strong market for the Sharrow uh, Veeam product. If we move on to the next slide. So why did they choose us? They did search very broadly to see who could manufacture the larger sizes of propellers. But Veeam's in a very unique position because we are the still the only commercial manufacturer of volume of high precision, fully computer controlled machined propellers. So every square millimeter of our propellers is computer controlled machined. So our processes were already largely in place for the Sharrow product. So they looked extensively and kept coming back to Veeam as being uh, the you know the likely candidate. And you have some idea that meter diameter propeller you can see there. That was our first prototype, and it's produced in three weeks. So um, we can produce these very very quickly with minimum modification to our current processes. So the other advantage we have is we're already selling to most of the high performance um, boat builders or major boat builders around the world with our key product in North America, in England, and in Europe. So again, our distribution network is 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 very strong. Move to the next slide. So where will these be made? Well, we have a facility here in uh, Western Australia where we're manufacturing 450 to 500 propellers a month, uh, all fully CNC machined in a highly automated uh, machining facility, which operates around the clock lights off in the machining uh, area. So we expect that the people will actually, we, we believe many of our customers will essentially transition to uh, the Sharo, the Veeam Sharo from the, our Veeam product. And that enables us to commence manufacturing um, early in the new year. So if the adoption rate follows the same pattern as the Sharo outboard propellers, then we expect that we'll need to be building increased capacity over the next few years. So an expansion plan would likely involve a new manufacturing facility being built or acquired, uh, with the main cost being uh, CNC equipment, uh, robots, laser guided forklifts, furnaces, and other foundry equipment. And this was an, an area that we were looking at in any event because we're, we're starting to come to full capacity at the facility we're in. So there's um, an, uh, this is not a change to our plans. It's a change of the product coming out of that, uh, that next facility. And we have the option of outsourcing some of the early stages uh, of the casting process uh, to suitable people to help us um, get through the early stage of production while we set up these last little bits of equipment that we might need. So funding all above will be decided at the time that we expand uh, and we'll work it out the options at that time. But we traditionally, we simply do um, commercial HPs on the CapEx and we believe that um, we can certainly expand within our normal uh, capacity without having to go back to the markets at this stage. So on the next uh, slide, if we could have that. So target market and pricing. Well, this is very interesting. So the target market is propellers below five metres in diameter, which is our maximum capacity. Uh, the main volumes are in the, the 10 metre to 30 metre range, where there are premium production yacht manufacturers uh, who, the, who we believe will embrace this significantly better product. 
So commercial operators are expected to adopt this, and this is probably very interesting to us because of the, the financial uh, benefits of having a reduced fuel consumption. Some of these work boats are, can use uh, up to $2 million worth of fuel a year that we can uh, reduce that by, in the test that Shara have chosen, you know, it was 8 to 12% over our best, finest product, which is the best in the world. So it's a significant reduction. And we believe there's a lot of existing fleets which will look at changing propellers over with a very short few months um, payback to reduce not only their fuel consumption, but also their carbon footprint. So overall, the market is, is about around 100,000 vessels. Uh, if you include the existing fleet at around 2.6 billion, um, and we need to consider that as all available to us. And there's also a new boat market of about 15,000 vessels worth about 338 million per, per annum. So the Sharo by Beam will cost more to make, both in materials and manufacturing time, uh, and it will be selling at a premium, and there's a licence fee to pay to Sharo, um, but we believe that uh, we're very well placed to produce these uh, with a, a economical production process, so not a huge premium to cost. So we believe the, the adoption rate will be very high. As we've seen in the outboard motor market, you can try and order a Sharo, but there's a waiting list. So they've really embraced it. So if you go to the next. So what's next for us? We expect that we'll be coming back to the investment community and updating them uh, after we have done our performance testing. And we'll be looking to produce things like the fuel savings, uh, also looking at uh, noise and vibration reductions. And that will give us a better understanding of where this product's going to take us. So we expect then um, that that's all going as we expect. The first Charo by Beam products expect to be available for purchase uh, early 2024. So we expect the full range of Charo by Beam propellers to be rolled out by the end of 24 calendar year. Uh, sorry, financial year. Um, and we do think that uh, there's going to be a development of a series of propellers, and we believe there may, may possibly be a, a high-speed version, a workboat version, uh, and perhaps a super yacht version. So this will all be developed, and we'll be providing input to Shara to system to do that. So a very exciting time for Veeam uh, to give us this opportunity, which is global and exclusive on some, some really exciting technology. Uh, thank you, Paul. Thank you, Mark. Well, firstly, you know, big congratulations to yourself and the team at Veeam for you know managing to secure that uh, that Shero uh, contract. It's obviously a game changer, and it's great to see that uh, what's been a tough time for markets. Mark, uh, investors have got on board and, and realised the value of this uh, this deal is going to bring to the company. So, congratulations. Thank you. Now, I've got a few questions for you. Uh, first one here: How much more complicated? Complicated is it to manufacture the Shero propellers, and what is the capex required over the next twelve months to ramp up production? Okay, it's for Veeam. It is not uh, particularly more difficult to manufacture. So there are some small changes in the casting process, but the machining process is just different programs. And this is what probably made Veeam so appropriate for this particular development is that for us, it's it's a small step up and forward. Uh, for nearly every other manufacturer globally, it is a massive transformation from what is basically a hand-profiled product in most cases to a fully computer-controlled machine process. So it's a huge, massive, it's a massive change. So for us, though, it's simple. Uh, so on the terms of CapEx, you have some idea. If we were to set up a, a, a factory to, to manufacture this, we would expect to be able to produce uh, two to 250 propellers a month probably from the order of 5 to $7 million capex. And that's not a particularly difficult thing for us to do. It is reasonably capital intensive, of course, um, but the machinery lasts a very long time. And um, uh, we found that the production uh, of these propellers just continues to be a, a day in, day out manufacturing model it becomes very routine. Gotcha. And uh, how much of a premium will the Sharo propellers be sold for? And how will the license fee impact on margins? That's a very good question. Uh, at, at the moment in America, if you're, there's a $1,000 outboard propeller, traditional one, is a $5,000 Sharo propeller. That's about five times the price. So we certainly won't be up around that level. 
but we think that the propeller will be a multiple of our current price. So um, we believe that it is it will take longer and is more complex to make, but I also believe that the advantages it brings to our customers is so significant that the premium is certainly worthwhile and the payback for them will be, for certainly for workboats, will be measured in months. So that's a pretty exciting thing, uh, certainly exciting development for them. Um, so I, I think there's perhaps um, the margins for us will certainly increase. And I think what we're able to do is perhaps capitalise with our margins on the fact that we've spent 20 years perfecting manufacturing techniques that enable a company to manufacture such a complex design as the Sharrow is. Yeah. And uh, with the cost savings that can be expected from using these propellers, uh, you, the likely payback you said was months for both boat owners? Yeah, part of our calculation is going to be working out the cost saving per hour of operation of various size vessels. Uh, as you can imagine that if you're using it 3,000 hours a year like a ferry, um, there's a massive saving. The payback might only be a few months. If it's a pleasure boat, then obviously you only do a few hundred hours a year, then the payback is probably forever. But uh, but you've got to understand that if you can drop um, your sound levels on your vessel by more than half, then for a luxury vessel, it's a bit of a game changer. It's one of the big obstacles they have when they're motoring is the propeller uh, provides quite a lot of noise and vibration. Uh, the big thing for defence vessels is the, the uh, signature of a, of a propeller is what generally defines the vessel. So if you can significantly reduce the, um, the signature of that vessel, then that's a real game changer for defence. So there's a, there's a lot of advantages, not just in carbon footprint and, and cost savings and in uh, noise and vibration. So they're, they're all very serious changes to the propulsion market. Gotcha. And look, will expansion see production move offshore or stay in Australia? And if it is going offshore, uh, what, what would that expansion look like? Look, this is only our opinion, but if this uh, takes off as it, as it does, there will be plants all over the world. But the, the next plant, which we've spoken to investors about previously, we were a few months ago, in fact, we were looking, uh, looking very favourable to have the next plant in perhaps ex-Eastern Bloc Europe, um, where we're close to the market, as you can imagine, air freight, you know, it's currently 15% of the value of our product. Uh, there's lower labour, lower rental. Uh, there's also tax incentives to move there. But this is this is very different. We need to consider that when you're perfecting a new product like this, having it uh, in your shadow is very important. So that's what the board is considering at the moment, that uh, there may be a strong argument to have the next plant in Western Australia. Uh, but alternatively, there's a lot of pressure from Sharrow to look at to putting one in the US, they're they're from Detroit, Michigan, and they're very keen to see that there. And it's really perhaps the order in which seems most sensible. Gotcha. And just to finish up, uh, how are you going to drive worldwide sales? Will a new sales network need to be sort of set up? Yeah, we we are going to set up something new. Shara have recommended how they'd like to see that network, and we actually concur with that. Uh, we have got a wide uh, distribution network through distributors and agents currently and all of those people will be invited to become a an agent of Sharrow going forward the Veeam Sharrow so it'll be a little different model to what we currently use but we'll be springboarding from the existing network we have. Mark an absolute pleasure uh, thanks for coming on today and you have a great weekend. Thank you Paul. Thank you.